father or mother, brothers or sisters. As a child, I lived with my aunt, Mrs. Red, at Gates Head Hall. I do not remember that she ever spoke one kind word to me. Jane? Jane! Mrs. Reed wants to see you in the drawing room. What's her age? Nine years to be exact. So much. How much do you think that? What's your name? Jane Anne. Are you in charge? Earlier this morning, she struck this little fellow's head most cruelly and without provocation. That's not true! Jane! He hit me first. Silence! Chen, dear, did you strike her first? No, indeed, Mama. Yes, Mama. I saw it. You did. You know you did. You knocked me down and cut my head. I need a bleed. You are going to Lugo, Jane. It is a school for unfortunate orphans. And that's final. This conversation is over. possesses the ordinary form of girlhood. No single deformity points her out as a marked character. Now who would think that the devil one had already found a servant and an agent in her? Yet, as much I need to say, is this case. Therefore, you must be on your guard against her, shun her example, avoid her company, exclude her from the sports and shut her out from your benefits. Teachers, you must watch her, or weigh her words, scrutinize her action, punish her for the sake of soul. For it's my duty to warn you that my tongue falters as I tell it that this girl, this child, the native of a Christian land worse than many of the new heathens as it spread to Brahma and kneels before Chuggernaut. This girl is a liar. Now, let's sit 
upon that school and let no one speak to them. That's You heard what they said? They said you mustn't have anything to do with me. No, go on, take it. I'm not bad. I promise I'm not. And I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I know, but it's wrong to hate people. I was afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of, Jane. I'm not afraid. Helen! Helen! You must be cold, Jane. Lay down here and cover yourself with my pillow. <laughs> Don't cry, Jane. Don't cry. But they were going to see the world together and drive the lovely coach on board. You have to see the world for me. All the places that I didn't see. And I think of you all the time. I love you, little Helen. <coughs> Are you warm now? Yes. Okay, good night. Good night, Helen. <coughs> I'm now going to see the world for you, Helen. Good day. Perhaps... Is this the Thornfield Hall? Yes, dear. Are you the new governess? Come in. You must be tired. I'll take you straight to your room. You've got a nice, bright fire for you then. And Leia's taken the chill off your sheets in the warming pan. Shall I have the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Fairfax tonight? Mrs. Fairfax? Oh, you mean Miss Adele? Isn't she your daughter? Oh, gracious. No. Adele is French. I have no family. No family at all. Come here. 
That is Mr. Edward's room. He's abroad, of course. His visits are so sudden and unexpected. A wanderer on the face of the earth. That's what Mr. Edwards is. I'm afraid. Mr. Edwards? Who's Mr. Edwards? Why? The owner of the Thornfield, of course. But I thought this was your house. Mine? Bless your soul, child. I'm only the housekeeper. Thornfield belongs to Mr. Edward Rochester and little Adele is his wife. And now, here's your room, my dear. It's quite small, but I thought you would like it better than the large front chamber. It is a beautiful room, but then the whole house is beautiful. It is, indeed, and it belongs to the family time out of mind. Well, good night, my dear. Mama had a dress like this. Only she could dance much more beautifully. I can dance too. Do you wish to see it? Now? This very moment? Now you speak like Monsieur Rochester. For him, it is never the right moment. Your name's Adele, isn't it? Well, Adele, do you know what I was thinking? I was thinking that never in my life have I been awakened so happily. woman can i do anything just stand out of the way that's all i'm sorry for the inconvenience that caused apologies won't mind my uncle oh. what are you waiting for now i can leave you like this seeing that you're not fit to walk you have the will of your own where do you come from i'm from mr rochester's house you know mr rochester no i have never seen him You're not the servant of the hall. You're the... I'm the new governess. Oh. The new governess. <laughs> well, necessity compels me to make you useful. Now, thank you and get out of my way. Dear, off with your things. You've been asking to see the new governess. School class? Oh, Mr. Rochester, of course. Good day. Here is Miss Ayer, sir. Well, Miss Ayer, have you no talk? I was waiting, sir, until I was spoken to. Very proper. But next time when you see a man in the road, do not run into the road until he has passed. I assure you, sir, it was not deliberate. It was not deliberate, but it is nonetheless painful. Well then, goodbye, ladies, and I have important business to attend to. Rochester is very difficult, but he gives me the most beautiful present. Look, Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle! You see? It suits me perfectly. Miss Ayer, good day, Mr. 
Rochester? Good day, Mr. Rochester. And, uh, enjoy your presence without embarrassing me with your enthusiasm. Would you leave us alone for a moment? I am not fond of the prattle of children. As you see, I am a crusty old bachelor and have no associations connected with their list. And in this house, the only alternative prattle is the simple-minded of old lady, which is nearly as bad. But today, I feel disposed to be gregarious and communicative, and I believe you could amuse me, Miss Eyre. Sit down, Miss Eyre. No, don't draw it farther off. Sit down just where I placed it. You examine me, Miss Ad. Do you find me handsome? No, sir. Indeed. I beg your pardon, sir. I was too plain. Not at all. You told me the brutal truth. My answer was a mistake. Why don't you speak? What about, sir? Choose your own subject. You're silent, Miss Eyre. Where are you going? It's time for Adele's lessons. No, young lady. It is not for Adele that you are going. You wish to escape me, isn't that true? In my presence, you are hesitant to smile gaily or to speak freely. Admit that you are afraid. Sir, I may be bewildered, but I'm certainly not afraid. Now, if you'll excuse me. Miss Eyre, I hope you'll be happy here at Thornton Field. I hope so, sir. I think so. I'm glad. Mr. Rochester? Mr. Rochester? Mr. Rochester? Mr. Rochester? to kill you. I heard them coming along the gallery. Shall I call Mrs. Fairfax? Mrs. Fairfax? That's the juice what you call her for? Let her sleep. Here. Wrap this around you. And sit over here. I'm going to leave you for a few minutes. Be still as a mouse and don't call anyone. I did not know Mr. Rochester had a guest today. I must prepare something. Jane, Mr. Rochester wishes you to bring Adele to the drawing room after dinner. Oh, please send Adele by yourself. He only asks me out of politeness. That is what I thought. And I told him you weren't used to company. Nonsense, he said. If she objects, I'd come and fetch her myself. 
Of course, you must wear your very best, my dear. A woman must be beautiful, Edward. A man need only be strong and valiant. Let his face go high, as long as he has a fist. Is that it? Edward, I thought you weren't fond of children. More of what? Then what induced you to take charge of such little puppet? Where did you pick her up? I didn't pick her up. She was left on my hands. I suppose you have a governess for her. I saw a person with her just now. Is she gone? Oh no. There she is still, hiding in the corner. My mama does not like to speak of governesses. The clever ones are detestable, while the others go test. May we excuse ourselves? How do you do? I am very well, sir. Why you did not speak to me in the drawing room? I did not wish to disturb you, as you seem engaged. That you have been doing while I've been away? Nothing particular. Teaching Adele as usual. You seem paler. What's the matter? Nothing. Did you take cold during the night of fire? No, sir. Go back to the drawing room. You are leaving too early. I am tired, sir. And a little depressed. About what? Nothing. I am not depressed, sir. But I tell you, you are so depressed that a few more words could bring tears to your eyes. Indeed, they are there now. Shining, shimmering. I must rest, Mr. Rochester. Thank you for being hospitable, Edward. Perhaps it is time we talked about our marriage arrangement. Thank you, Blanche. I think it is not time we discussed this matter for ourselves. But... You see, I am old. And I don't see any reason why you must marry a man like me, except perhaps for money. It is time we stay true to ourselves. I wish you the very best for your future endeavors. Lady Blanche, goodbye. I have no love for Blanche. It is you. I love you, Jane. Say, Edward, I'll marry you. Please. Cousin, I know that we did not have such sisterly relationship before. However, it is with sadness that I say to you that mother, your aunt is sick. She needs you, Jane. I requested your presence not because I owe you an apology, but because it's your uncle who asked for you. Here, take this and go. And before you leave, I want you to know that I still and will always abhor you. Stop 
stop the wedding. I declared existence of an impediment. You cannot proceed. Mr. Rochester has a wife already. I can testify to that. There will be no wedding today. Instead, I invite you to come to the house and visit Grace Paul's patient, my wife. Grace, the keys, quickly! Please, sir! Mad <laughs> and the offspring of a mad family to leave the church and the law bind me forever without hope of divorce. <laughs> and this is what I wished for, this young girl who stands so grave and quiet at the mouth of hell. Look at the difference and then judge me. Hear me, Jane. I love you. Can you not forgive me? I do forgive you with my whole heart. Then stay with me, Jane. And we would not be hurting anybody. We should be hurting ourselves. Goodbye. Let's go, Jane. Jane, I want you to marry me and be with me in India. I can bear the thought of marrying my cousin. And besides, I'm in love with another man. I dreamt of you, and I had a sudden urge to visit you. Mr. Rochester? What happened to you? Crazy wife. Bertha burned down the house. And this is what happened to me. I missed you, Jane. And I've longed for your presence. I've missed you too, Edward. I can't forget you. Then, take me back, please. I don't have to take you back, Edward. You never left. I love you. <laughs>